Now, trust me, this will be one of the most instructional and educational videos that you will ever watch on YouTube about chess. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the things that make it impossible for you to improve at chess. Five reasons why you always lose your chess games. I mean, even when you are supposed to win. So keep on watching and don't skip so that you don't miss any important point. Reason number one, you want to win fast. You think chess is an easy game where you can play one or two moves, 5, 7, 10, 11, and then you checkmate your opponent very quickly and you go home. No, it doesn't work that way. E.g., you play pawn to e4, e5 by your opponent, and then you go queen. I mean, what are you doing with this queen here? Yes, you are eyeing the weak f7 pawn and at the same time threatening to take the e5 pawn. And I know your coach told you about the fool's met, but in reality, things like this don't occur. And just to be honest with you, you shouldn't even feel good if you win any game of chess in this manner against a beginner because this doesn't help. This is not an indication that you are improving at chess. No, you won't see any advanced player blundering with knight to f6, allowing you to checkmate him so easily. This is not how chess works. Another example that I can give is where, for example, you start with pawn to e4, then let's say black plays the Karakan defense pawn to c6. Well, I have an amazing course on the Karakan defense. Feel free to check it out. The link is in the description down below. But you go pawn to d4. Your opponent responds with d5, a more standard move. Knight c3, d takes e4, and then you take back with your knight. They play knight f6. You take the knight. They take with their pawn. Bishop e3, bishop e6. You play bishop d3, hoping to set this little trap so that if black castles short, then you checkmate on h7. Come on, you guys. This is not how chess works. Chess is very different from checkers. You shouldn't be hoping for these kinds of move sequences in order to win fast. Such kind of play does not exist at advanced levels. So what is my advice? Well, my advice here is that Let's say after pawn to e4, just to illustrate better, black plays pawn to d6, and then you go d4. You should just be playing by the chess principles. I mean, just start with your center pawns if allowed, and keep on ensuring that your center pawns are well protected. You know, chess is divided into three stages. The opening stage, the middle game stage, and the end game stage. And a normal game of chess will last about 45 moves or 40 moves somewhere there. So you just have to take your time. You develop your knights first before developing, uh, let's say, the bishops. So you can see that we just developed our knights here according to black's responses. Knight f6, we played knight c3 defending our pawn. And then g6 by black, that's when we played knight to f3. They may play bishop g7, so we know they want to castle short. We just simply go bishop e2. We know black is going to castle short. We also do the same. If pawn to c6, this is the check variation of the perk defense. You go bishop g5 if you want. If pawn to h6, the bishop will come to e3. You're just playing normally. You're not even intending to checkmate anytime soon. Queen c7, for example, you go queen d2. And with this queen bishop battery, you plan to go to h6 someday. You get rid of the dark squared bishop and continue with your plans. By the way, our opening stage is now complete. We just managed to connect our two rooks along this rank and all our minor pieces are out. So this is how you know your opening stage is complete. We are now entering into the middle game. They may play knight bd7. See, there is no game that is going on on the king side. We should forget about this. That's why I have highlighted these squares in red, showing you that we should forget about the king side at the moment. Instead, we should focus on the center of the board. The center of the board is just these four squares, ensuring that we do not lose our center pawns. If need be, we can also reinforce with other pieces. And also, this is where we're going to be playing our game. There's no game on the king side here. So for example, we can go with pawn to a4. They play e5. Now there's tension on the center. What do we do? We know if pawn takes, we can take back with our knight. So we just play something like rook fe1 here. No memorization. This is just a move that we play in the middle game. Indirectly eyeing our e4 pawn. They may take our d pawn. We don't take back with our queen. Because we are using our mind here. Black may just play 
a little discovery. There's a bishop on g7. So we take back with our knight. If pawn to c5, we go knight b5 attacking the queen and winning the pawn on d6. So they play something like rook e8. Now there's too much tension on our center pawn. What do we do? We reinforce with another pawn. Now our pawns are defending each other. They may go knight f8, paving way for their light squad bishop. We go pawn to f5. Our game is on the queen side. Bishop d7. We go pawn to b4. That's just one of the options. Knight e6. We take the knight because there was just too much tension on the center. Plus this powerful bishop here is doing its indirect job. So bishop takes e6. We play rook a d1, connecting our two rooks. And we just have to be very careful that we do not hang any piece. So those are the only things to consider. We just play chess. There is no immediate checkmate coming here. What we are going to do from here is just to find better ways of trading off our big pieces so that we can only remain with a better pawn structure to go with into an end game. This is how we play chess, you guys. So that's reason number one, why you guys don't improve your chess. All right. Reason number two, you like making unnecessary early kingside attacks. Now this is similar to the first point, but it is somehow different. Or well, let me just show you. Bishop e7, you castle short. They also do the same. If you want to know how to play the stone wall attack correctly, you can watch the video that has popped up in the card above and be good to go. But here, just because Kaspar emphasized on the pawn to g4 move, without even considering what is happening on the board, you straight away play pawn to g4. I mean, what are you attacking on the king's side? We know your ideas, but one thing that you don't know is that your center is not yet strong. Black can play, for example, knight e4, and this knight is very strong on this square. At this point, your king's side attack was just unnecessary. You are just weakening your position. Pawn to g5, for what? They'll take your other knight, and now see, you can't even take with your f pawn. Because your g-pawn will fall, and so you are forced to take with your d-pawn, which is not what you intended to do. And look at black here. Black has already castled short, and he is not doing anything on the king's side, as you can see. Because he understands that there is no game on the king's side. The battle is now on the queen's side, and that's why you have seen him expanding from this side of the board. And by the way, Stockfish here likes the position for black. So avoid doing these things. And so what do I recommend? Here you just go for example e4, e5. Then instead of queen h5 or other dubious moves, you can go knight f3, that's okay. They play knight c6, you go bishop c4, just having a normal Italian game. Bishop c5, c3, ensuring that this knight does not occupy any of these highlighted squares. Knight f6 by black attacking your e4 pawn. You defend it with your d pawn. d6 by black paving way for the light squared bishop. You castle short, a castle short. Pawn to h3. Yeah, this stops bishop g4. Now, wait a second. Black here realizes that there is nothing going on on the king's side. There is no game here. So, they now shift their attention to the queen's side. Starting with the move pawn to a5. This is a good move. And right now I'm following one of the games between two grandmasters. This is how they play their chess. Knight bd2. Good idea. White just wants to reposition his queen's knight to the king's side. Let's say black plays pawn to h6. Pawn to a4. These moves can wait. Bishop e6. We don't want to take first because we don't want to allow white to reposition his pieces better. Rook e1. A very important move again. Bishop takes, knight takes, rook e8. Now it is us eyeballing this bishop. If bishop takes, we take back with the knight. And someday maybe we'll put this knight on f5. This will be our juicy square for our knight. Queen d7. We play knight h4. One of our knights should sit on this square. We just want to be as active as possible. Knight e7. Now we play queen f3. Renewing our idea of putting one of our knights here. If g6, we take the free knight on f6. So king h7, we go knight h f5. Here we are not even intending to checkmate anytime soon. We are just positioning our pieces on the most active squares in order to create some good attacking chances, maybe in the near future. 
I mean, knight takes f5, we take back. If g6, we can take on h6 and take black's knight on f6. So they'll play rook a d8, for example. c4, you can see that with rook a d8, they were planning to go pawn to d5. So you also need to be using your brain. c4, queen e6. Now there's nothing going on here. We cannot mate. This is where you mess up with moves such as queen g3. I mean, there's no mate. You can't mate on g7. Black has got too many moves or too many defenders that can stop this checkmate. So you just go queen d1. The game is this side. Stop focusing on the king side. They'll play pawn to g6. Now you go knight e3, intending to put your knight on this other square. So they'll play pawn to c6, stopping your idea. And what do you do? Now you go queen d2, intending to take this free pawn or maybe go Pawn to b4. This is where the game has now shifted. Pawn to b6. If you want, you can go b4 right away. But what do you do? You play rook b1 first, supporting the upcoming pawn push. So they play c5 to stop your ideas. And now you can see that the queen side is deadlocked. But with this pawn push, a new weakness has been created on d5. So there's no memorization here. I'm just trying to read the position. So now we shift back to the king side since this side of the board is locked. With this move, we are ready to push pawn to a4, a possible pawn break. And so you see them playing knight h5, stopping pawn to a4. And now we take advantage of this weak d5 square, attacking the weak pawn on b6. They have to defend it until now. When we see that we don't have any weaknesses on the center and on the queen side, that's when we start launching the attack towards our enemy's king. Yeah, we can play knight c7, double attacking black's two pieces. But first of all, we play an in-between move, pawn to g4, attacking the knight. If knight f6, for example, that's when we can fork black's two pieces. Queen e7, we take the rook. Rook takes. And now we go pawn to f4. As you can see, there is no game on the queen side. That's why we shifted our attention to the king side. This is exactly how we play chess, you guys. E takes f4. We take with the rook, intending to put the other rook behind the first rook. Knight d7, for example. Rook b f1. And the ideas are very simple. We are now approaching the end game. It's high time we start involving our king. We'll push pawn to h4 later on. We'll play pawn to d4, a possible pawn break. This is how we play chess, you guys. So avoid making unnecessary early kingside attacks in an effort to checkmate quickly. It doesn't work. All right, let's move on. Reason number three, lack of good opening prep. Yes, you heard me right. Let's say the only opening you know is pawn to e4. Expecting black to play pawn to e5. But once your opponent plays something else, let's say knight f6, the Ali Heinz defense, and you get lost. And you expect to be a very good chess player. No, that's not how it works. You need to have a solid repertoire against most of these staffs. Now, having known that there are so many responses and defenses that black can play against one e4. That's why I decided to create an English opening course that will avoid most of these defenses by black. The link for my website is in the description down below where you can purchase all my courses at very affordable prices and other opening repertoires that will prepare you to become a better player. So what do I recommend? You can play something like the English opening with this move at least you are avoiding lots and lots of Black's theories, defenses, the Sicilian defense, the Karakan, the Ali Eins. I don't know. Maybe they'll play something like pawn to e5. The only thing that you need to remember is to develop your knights first before any other things. If they go pawn to e5, you go knight g5, attacking this pawn twice. Knight c6, they may play bishop e7, one of the most. Preparing to castle short, you go... Bishop g2 preparing to castle short as well. Castle short, castle short. And now you have realized that there is no game here. You can even see for yourselves. So now you shift your attention to the center. Your focus must be here and also on the queen side. This is where you are going to be playing the rest of your middle game. For example, they play pawn to d6. You go d3. h 6, you go rook b1. So they go bishop e6. For whatever reason, 
you go pawn to b4. So you can see how we are advancing from the queen side. Nothing to do with the king side. Queen d7, you go e4. You just want to have total control on the d5 square. They go pawn to a6. You go a4. Let's say they go bishop h3. You still go pawn to b5. They take, you take. All right. Reason number four, playing by memorization. Now, of course, even strong players, grandmasters, and other advanced players do memorize opening moves, but that's not their habit. These guys just play normal chess according to what they are seeing on the board. The problem with you is that you want to memorize games. See, what strong players do is that they only memorize positions, and that is at worst. They only memorize positions and pawn structures. So stop memorizing moves. Anyways, let me give you the last reason so that I can continue taking my coffee. The last reason is your fear and lack of self-confidence. Ah, oh, Kasper, what do you mean? Let me explain. How many times have you sat down to play an opponent who has a higher rating than you? And then you start thinking, oh, I'm going to lose. I don't have a chance. What am I going to play? Don't worry. We've all felt that way. That's just the truth. Even those grandmasters that you admire. However, if you believe you can't win, you now have two opponents. Your own thoughts that have little to do with the game you are about to play and the person you will be playing. So how can you expect to beat a better player? The first thing you have to do is believe that it's possible. You need to believe in yourself. That should be easy because history shows us that weaker players have beaten better players at virtually every chess tournament that's ever been played. It's happening somewhere in the world right now and it will. Have you ever beaten anyone you thought was a better player than yourself? I mean, maybe not just in chess. So if that's true, you've proven that you can do it. That means it can happen again. Or maybe the phrase that is easy to remember, which you should always keep in mind is, fake it until you make it. If you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. That is when you sit down to play a game of chess and you think you are beaten before you even start or you are. So remember, the harder you fight, and the longer you stay in a game against a superior opponent, the greater the pressure on them to win. This mounting pressure can cause them to make a mistake and that may be all that you need to win if you are thinking clearly. That's because the difference between winning and losing a chess game will often come down to just one move. Tell yourself that you'll be the one to find that one move, the winning move. So the next time you sit down to play a superior opponent, expect to win because playing one opponent at a time is usually enough. As a beginner or an intermediate level player, you have nothing to lose. Trust me, that's just how it works. So don't even feel intimidated, just play chess. Signing out, Coach Casper from Casper Chess. I won't tell you.